You're welcome, and thank you for tuning in today. I pray that you're being blessed and that you see that you are the evidence of the goodness of God and that everything that God is doing in his life, he's proving himself to you. God is proving himself, and he doesn't have anything to prove. He has no ego. He's God, and he's showing you that you can build your faith in me. Look at the evidence all around you that I can do anything but fail. So today, I'm going to tell you how to work by faith. I want you to do me a favor, like this service, share it, tag somebody, let them know you're at church. Hey, I want you to do me a favor, take notes. And I want you to, I'm going to show you how to work your faith to see the results of God in your life. Because here's the thing, works of faith work every time you work them, just like if your battery's charged every time you cut it on, it should work. A light switch, it should work. Faith works like that, but the reality is you click the uh, light on, then you know when it's coming on. We don't know when God does things, we just know that he does. And I'm going to pray that you have the patience until God reveals and God does the things that he promised to you in his life. Works of faith are where we do this. We work to enter into the rest of God. The rest of God, you see it first in Genesis 1 where God rested after he had completed creation. Then he talks about a rest in the New Testament and ultimately in Hebrews. This rest is where we enter into the confident hope that God has already done, he's already finished everything that he said that he would do and that I have everything I need to accomplish what God wants me to do on the earth. It works like this. Most of you are probably sitting down watching this broadcast. The chair is doing the work to support you. You are resting in the chair. The promises of God work just like that. You rest knowing it's going to support you, it's going to hold you, It's going to sustain you. And the word of God works just like that. Hebrews 4 and 1 says, Since a promise remains of entering into his rest, let us, for lest any of you fear, lest any of us seem to come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith. I want you to mix what you hear today with faith, knowing that God's going to come through for you. So rest is this. Rest in the confident hope of God by doing this. Let me show you in a practical sense. I find a promise in the word of God. I make that promise mine. I take it as mine. And I apply it in my life. And I watch the word do the work in the name of Jesus. I'm going to give you some things that work. And I'm going to show you how to work your faith through them. The first one is this. Working salvation through faith. Philippians 2 and 12 and 13 says this. Dear friends. You always followed my instruction when I was with you. And now that I'm away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation. Work in it. Obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you. He's working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. You work out your salvation by giving God your yes. And the way God works your salvation in you is not just through changing your behavior. God changes your desire. Many of you watching my, me right now and even my own life, as you have matured, what is uh, new and exciting in your life right now would have been boring to you five years ago. Because as you mature, your desire changes. What God does is not just change your behavior. Church in a relationship with God is not behavior modification. It is a heart change. When God changes your desire, you begin to think different. You begin to act different. That's why our actions many times don't line up with our heart. Because it takes a while for our life to calibrate with the true desires of our heart. So God said, I'm working in you both the will and and the to-do of his good will and his good favor. That's why you're not comfortable being broke. That's why you're not comfortable being depressed because deep down inside of you, there is this yearning for more. There is this yearning for better and that salvation working its way out inside of you. So God changes your desire. He changes who you are through a relationship with him. Here's what happens through a relationship with him. You discover what salvation really means. Salvation is more than a ticket to heaven. Salvation means wholeness. It means deliverance. It means prosperity. It means healing. All of these things come in your salvation package. I think every believer ought to get baptized. Do I got to get baptized to go to heaven? 
No, just like you don't have to have a wedding to get married. But it shows everybody that what's going on, what's happened in your life. It's like this wedding ring. It doesn't make me married. It shows you that I'm married. A baptism shows the world that you are saved, you are changed. There's no power in the water. It is an act of covenant going down and coming up like Jesus did. I think every believer ought to confess that Jesus is the Lord of their life, meaning he rules, I don't. And then I think every believer, and I, it bothers me that we contain this to certain denominations, every be- believer should desire to be spirit-filled. You get the spirit of God in you when you get saved. But to be filled with the Spirit is something that happens subsequent. It is a filling of the power of the Holy Spirit that activates something in your life. Yes, I believe in speaking in tongues. Yes, I believe in flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. It is not kooky. It is not weird. It is power from God to flow in every part of your life. And if you knew what it meant, you'd seek it and earnestly desire it because that's what comes with salvation. But you got to work salvation by faith. The next thing you got to work, and this is big, particularly for me in my life, you got to work your identity in Christ by faith. Many of us are living beneath our privileges because we don't understand our right identity. When you understand your right identity, you don't have to live sick, you can live healed. You don't have to live broken, you can live whole. If you under, you're listening to me right now, young lady, young man. If you understood your identity, you would not put up with toxic relationships. If you understood who you were, you would not settle for second best. I don't care what anybody tells you. You are a high value man. You are a high value woman, not because of your net worth, not because of your political status, but because you are what God says you are. That states your value. Your quality of life, though, hear me, though. It's not based on how God sees you. It's based on how you see you. And if you don't see you the way God sees you, you will not walk in confidence. You ever wanted something for somebody better than they want it for themselves? You knew they can do it. You knew they had it in them, but they didn't believe they had it in them. It is very hard when you want something for somebody else. You got to activate that thing inside of them where they want it just as bad as you do. God wants us to succeed. God wants us to be healed, but we got to want it as bad as he wants to give it to us. You got to ask yourself, do, my, do I see myself as a son or child of God or daughter of God, or do I see myself as a slave or a servant of God? In the book of John, it said slaves or servants don't know the will of the master. I know what the will of my father is for my life, and I walk in it in the name of Jesus. Here's what every believer must do. You got to discover your biblical call. What is your biblical call? Galatians 2 and 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I have power at work in my life that is greater than my flesh. When you think of flesh, you ought to think of just some perversion or just cussing somebody out or being drunk. The flesh I'm talking about is you living in your own intellect, your own strength. You think your your beauty, your your lack of beauty is going to get you somewhere. That's the source of anxiety and worry and all of these things. When you confidently rest in God, you understand this. I am because God says I am and because he said who I am, who he says I am. I can do whatever he calls me to do. There are going to be things you approach in life and your flesh is going to say, I've never done this before. But listen to your spirit. Your spirit is jumping inside of you saying, I have. Because you have the spirit of God. You got God running through your body saying, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I struggle tough with my, with my confidence. And many of us think confidence is when you just look yourself in the mirror and say, oh, I'm just so ugly, I hate myself. That, that's just one type of struggling with confidence. Uh, there is a, you struggle with your intellect and how smart you are, how, how well you perform in certain areas. I was on a job and I struggled so hard with my confidence because I would see others and I thought they were smarter than me. They went to other schools that I didn't go to. And my confidence was shot. And listen, if your confidence is not good, guess what? Your performance is going to go in line with your confidence. 
I would go to work and I would be nervous. I would not eat some days because it was just such a stressful environment. And I finally got to the point and says, I can't live like this. If I make a mistake, I make a mistake. If I don't know it, I don't know it. I said, God, you're going to have to live through me. This was the point I told you guys years ago that I thought I was going to die in my house, and I had an anxiety attack. My right side went numb. I said, Lord, here they go. I was living by myself. What triggered it was my lack of confidence, and when I finally just stood in God, you all, when I left that job, I did not realize I was in the top 10% performers. I had no clue because they saw me different than I saw me. I saw me as weak. I saw me as struggling, but I was trusting God. You got to learn not to look to the arm of the flesh. You got to see things through the eyes of your faith. I want to encourage somebody that's watching me right now. You're doing better than you think you are. You are further than you think you are, and Satan is trying to retard your growth. He's trying to make you go back by not seeing yourself the way God sees you. But when you discern your biblical call, you will see yourself the way God sees you. So there's something in me that has power to overcome. The next thing is this. You got to work the works of God by faith. Let me show you what I'm talking about. John 14 and 12, Jesus was speaking to his disciples. And he said, most assuredly, I say to you. Now, these guys had seen Jesus do all kinds of things. They seen him heal the sick. They seen him raise the, raise the dead. They seen him walk on water. They seen him uh, take mud pie and make a man's eyes come back, do all those things like that. Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you. He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Now, for a believer, we, we get excited when we see something. Like, oh, God, we can do great things. But to actually see somebody, it's like praying. I know people argue about the GOAT. It's like playing with Michael Jordan or playing with Kobe or LeBron James or in any of the great athletes right now, basketball, football, otherwise, and you see them do great things. It's like Barry Sanders walking up to a running back and say, listen, you think I did something without the best line in the world? You're going to do greater than this. And you said, Barry Sanders is saying this to me. Jesus Christ is saying to us, you think I did something. Wait till you see what you're going to do when you embrace your biblical call and what I want to do through you. And he said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, that will I do. He said, let me go back. He says, that that you see me do, you'll do also. And then he said, greater works than these will you do also because I go to my Father. The work, many people argue, all right, healing stopped with Jesus. All these things don't happen. There's no gifts of the Spirit flowing. They were just for the apostles. Can I ask you a question? Have demons stopped oppressing and possessing people? Have people stopped being sick? Have there still been trouble in the world? If trouble in that side hasn't stopped, God's side has not stopped either. God is still healing. God is still delivering. God is still doing everything he did in the Bible miraculously. He will do it through you. Well, I, he part of the Red Sea in the Bible. Do you have a Red Sea? You may not have one literally, but you got one figuratively called your debt. And God will cause you to your debt to part and you walk through a middle of debt and get to your house possession and get to whatever you need. God's still parting Red Seas, but you got to see that he, what he's doing. And when you understand this, you'll understand you can lay hands on the sick. You can cast out demons. I am all for counseling. Go and talk things out. Go sit and talk things out. But some of the stuff that we're seeking counseling for, we can get deliverance from through laying on of hands. There are some demonic oppressions that are bothering us that some of us need to learn to stand flat-footed and say, you know what? In the name of Jesus, I will sleep tonight. In the name of Jesus, my hair will stop falling out because I am so anxious. In the name of Jesus, I will quit biting my fingernails. I'll quit overeating In the name because I'm so nervous. In the name of Jesus, I will quit having these anger outbursts and all these things happen and you will take control of the spirit. Watch this. I don't believe believers can be possessed by the enemy because we are filled with the spirit. But you can be weighed down and oppressed by a demonic oppression that you learn to rebuke all for you in the name of Jesus. Don't let this scare you when I say this. But every time before I get ready to speak or there is a big event that I am come under, that spirit of anxiety will weigh heavy on me. And I have learned the secret. I begin to pray in the spirit. I speak in tongues. And I begin to rebuke that thing and say, you will not control me. Because listen, I am spirit led, not uh, anxious and worry led. I'm not going to let my flesh lead me into battle. I'm going to let my spirit lead me. And I rebuke that thing. 
in the name of Jesus. Do I believe in counseling? Yes, absolutely. I believe that God, matter of fact, they call Jesus said he's a wonderful counselor. There's nothing wrong with, with counselors, but you got to discern the difference between what needs a couch and what needs oil. And the Holy Spirit will give you that wisdom in the name of Jesus. The next thing is this. you got to become your work of faith. Become your work of faith. Watch this. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11 says this. With this in view, we constantly pray for you that our God will count you worthy of your calling. Remember, I said discover your biblical calling. But here's your calling. Your calling to faith. You are called to come out of your flesh and to start living the supernatural by faith. And with his, not your power, his power, fulfill every desire for goodness and complete your every work of faith so that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ will be glorified by what you do and in you in him according to the precious grace of our Lord uh, God and Jesus Christ. You are called to not live by your flesh. You are called to live by faith, which is basis is in the word of God. We are to apply our faith in every situation. And hear me real good when I say this. We are to become what God wants us to be in a situation. And when you become who you're supposed to be, you'll do what you're supposed to do. Many of us are praying, God, deliver me from this. Take this away from me. The reality is this. God may do not deliver you from it. He may deliver you in it. And what God is more concerned with is who you become in the situation versus how you just come out of the situation. Through your go through, your faith grows and you develop into something greater than you ever imagined. I hate being broke. I hate not having enough money. You may call it fleshly or whatever you may call it, but I do not like it. And in the moments where I lived lean, here's what I found out God was more concerned with. The character that I developed in those moments versus the amount of money that I had in my bank account. Was I going to trust God to bring me through and go through legal means and go through uh, working and patience means and not live above my means in those moments? Or was I going to run game? Was I going to get money here and lie to this one and lie to that one to get what I need? It was in those moments the character was developed that God showed me, I want you to become who I want you to be. Some of you right now in the middle of the fire, you're going through it right now. And what God is concerned with is who you become in this situation. He said, I want you to become your work of faith. If you are dealing with anxiety, take a hold of the scripture. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall guard and keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. In that scripture, God didn't promise what was making you anxious was going to go away. Listen, you still got to take that test this week. You still got to do that presentation this week. But what's going to happen instead of rushing through the test, instead of, oh, my God, just get this presentation over with. You're going to walk in there with some swagger. You're going to walk in there and sit with a per like a person of confidence. And you're not going to be nervous by any question you get asked because God's going to give you the answer. You're going to speak with boldness. You're going to speak with character. You're going to speak with anointing. Why? Because we go through. We don't run from stuff. So when I become my work of faith, I become who God wants me to be in the middle of stuff. Because let me tell you something. If you keep rushing through stuff, you're going to wake up and be old and miss a lot of life. Life is not about living just for the sweet parts where you can rest and everything's perfect. Life is about embracing the moment. Life is about when it's uncomfortable saying, God, you with me. I need confidence to arise right now. And you need to start living and becoming your work of faith in the name of Jesus. If you're lacking confidence, whatever that thing is, lacking your confidence, you don't have to kill yourself going through whatever. Some of you right now, man, you, you listen, all of us, your confidence is not in the weight scale. Your confidence is not in the amount of degrees that you have. Now, if you want to lose weight, lose it. But don't lose it to gain confidence. Lose it to become what you want to be. If you want to go back to school, go back to school, but not to feel smart because you're, 
the degrees don't validate uh, your intellect. I, I've seen some people that got degrees and said they must have just been giving them away that day. I mean, they just, you know, intellect is not measured by your degrees. Do it because you know who you are. And when you stand in confidence that I am the head only and not the tail. Listen, I was the head when I had two suits that I had to mismatch together. And they had a shiny line in them because I had ironed them so much. As I am now that I can look in my closet and say, any, many, mighty, mo, I don't know which way to go. I, I am the same uh, confidence now. I developed it some time ago, and I know how to get it now because watch this. Confidence is like strength. You got to consistently build it. And when you walk in that, you become your work of faith. The last thing is this. You got to learn how to work the word. All faith is speech activated. You got to declare what you want to see. And when you are in faith, you will see whatever it is that you say. When you're not in faith, you say what you see. Hear what I'm saying. When you are in faith, you go find the word of God, say it, and you're going to see it. You don't just record the facts of what's going on around you. You declare what shall be right now in the name of Jesus. Before this church got started, uh, when we were going and we, didn't have, we did not have a keyboard player before we had a keyboard player, we went and bought a keyboard, and I would speak on Sundays. And they say, hey, somebody coming to play it? Absolutely not today. But by faith, one is going to show up. And guess what happened? Keyboard player showed up. You got to declare in your life. You single. Just go on declare. You go on to wherever you go to eat by yourself, Longhorn. Father, I declare uh, by this time next year, somebody going to be sitting on the other side of me. And guess what? They'll show up. That sounds crazy, don't it, until you read the Bible. In the Romans chapter 10, verse 8, verse 8 says this. Well, what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you would confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Hear me. For with the heart you believe, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Salvation shows up when you confess it, that Jesus is Lord. When you open your mouth and declare it. Mark 11 and 22 says this, Jesus said unto them, have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things that he says. Just don't take this. This is gender neutral. It can be, you can be a man or woman saying this. If you believe what you say and it's in Christ, it shall be done in the name of Jesus. I, when I was uh, studying for this, I remember sitting in this um, session, and we were talking, uh, was talking to this couple, and in particular this person, and we began to pray, and we got to a point of breakthrough. And I said, I want you to say this out of your mouth. And I was getting her to confess her deliverance and just to confess forgiveness. And her mouth locked up. And I said, say it. And when she began to open her mouth, she said, I can't. I said, say it. And her, you could see tears well up in eyes. I said, let them tears out. She said, I'm not. The moment she began to open her mouth, it came out as a whisper first. And God says, I am. I forgive you. I for and it, it was hard. But the more she said it, the more that thing broke. The more she allowed tears to flow. Now, tears don't mean breakthrough, but for her, in that moment, it did. And as she began to say what God said, guess what? Her strength began to arise. If you would just have you a confession session, well, you begin, I mean, most of us think about confession, you go back all the way to the third grade. I'm sorry that I stole this. and did. I'm not talking about that confession. I'm talking about saying what God says. Look yourself in the mirror. Speak. You're going to look crazy. Speak to your car. Speak to your character. Speak to your integrity. Speak to everything around you. will be what God says you can be. Find out what he says it is and declare it. Father, we declare this church full. Father, I declare wholeness. I declare healing. I declare salvation. I declare resources. I declare promotion. I declare help. I declare it. Why are you just watching? Just flow with me for a moment. I declare promotion. Show up to your house. I declare the strength of God arise inside of you. I declare salvation. Don't you click off. I declare salvation in your house. I declare you'll get a call that great things are going to happen in the name of Jesus. While well, I'm sitting here confessing this, we were in a Bible study. We have a location in Shelbyville. 
And while we were in there, I was telling them, I want you to confess right now what you want God to see and pray for somebody else. And there was a young man in there. He was praying for somebody. And while we were praying, you won't believe this, he left there. And that night, he got a call from the gentleman he was praying for. And he, he was the man, when he was telling me testimony, he was almost shaking. He said, you're not going to believe this. But my friend texted me and said, I don't know what happened, but around X, Y, Z time, I started to feel this presence, and I felt that thing lift off. He didn't say that thing, but I, I'm describing it in my words. He said, I felt the heaviness lift off of me, and I felt things getting better. And he said, this is crazy. And he said, man, I was praying for you around that time. I did believe that while you are where you are, God has angels who carry his word that will go to wherever they need to go. And those angels will perform and execute. While you are in this day, God will go into tomorrow. He will go wherever to the hospital. He'll go to your place of employment. He will perform his word. You have to work it with your mouth and say it. I am who he says I am. This will be what God says it will be. And Father, we receive help. We receive resources. We receive what if you need staff on your job. Whatever it is that you need, declare it. It's not positive thinking and wishful thinking. It's saying what God said. It's putting God on the line. He said, you're not a man that you should lie. Neither the son of man that you should repent. God, if you said it, we got your word on it. We trust you now. Father, we worship you as we, even as we end this broadcast, we thank you. Thank you for your anointing. I thank you for your presence. God, I thank you for your power. I thank you for everything that's in the room where every person watching this is. I pray they experience the tangible power of your anointing. Somebody's giving their heart to the Lord right now. Somebody's asking the Lord to fill them with the Holy Spirit. Somebody is declaring the goodness of the Lord over their house. And we shall see it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in today.